Once again, we find ourselves in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's what, what, what is known as the Wheel of Misfortune. Today technically is part two of our Varla Eagle One electric scooter review. And instead of being in the city, we're on a, you know, a parking lot where it broke last time. Now we're taking it out to the desert and in this graffiti wasteland, it kind of reminds us like Mad Max. A couple weeks ago, we did a video here Link is in the description below, but today I'm handing the camera over to Jessica. It's like her electric broomstick. She's a witch. Now, in case you need a little bit of a refresher, the company Varla, the company who makes the Eagle One electric scooter, reached out to us and said, hey, if we send you this scooter, would you be kind enough to review it? And we said, sure. Why not? We got it in the mail, put it together, took it out to a parking lot in Los Angeles, and I braked a little hard, and it seemed like it was broken. Looked it over, cleaned it up a little bit. It seems like it's working fine, and like I said, we're in the middle of the desert, and Jessica is going to be taking it for a spin this time. I think this time we're looking at a more practical use for what we would use it for. So we've described in the past that I do have some health issues that I'm not able to go hiking with you, which is always a big bummer for me. So we're out in the middle of the desert where we got some hills, we got some dirt, sand, debris, you know, as you would expect on a trail. And let's see how it holds up. Now, since we made the last video on this thing, a lot of people are like, yes, Jessica, the witchy Jessica, <laughs> got herself an electric broom. So technically, this is hers now. Now, what were you just telling me about your first impressions about being on this thing? My first impressions is that I have never stepped on a scooter before, especially an electric scooter. So it took me a minute to just feel familiar. But the thing that I really struggle with is the placement of the ignition switch or the throttle. Um, I got little hands, I'm five foot three, this almost comes up to my shoulders. So I'm having a difficult time finding a sweet spot with the throttle that doesn't give me a little bit of whiplash. I ride it for about 10 minutes, I kind of find that little spot, but that's one of the things that irks me at first is I'm constantly giving myself a little bit of whiplash because I can't find, my hands have a hard time gripping it where it's at. Well, it's yours, go for it. Give it a, give it a, give it a whirl. It's so big in that some desert. of you did notice in the last video, I kind of had to do a little push off because it's giant, but I'm going to stand back here just in balance. case you decide to, uh, to wreck it on me. Oh no. <laughs> Go for it. I do want to point out is we found one of the Wheel of Misfortunes filled with dirt, kind of like a dirt bike track. And this operates really just like one where if you hit a patch of soft soil with this and you turn, you have every chance of wiping out. I wiped out once down there, not to the point of injury, but um, I lost my back tire. I, I fishtailed pretty hard. And I wasn't doing very fast speed at all, I wouldn't say, but I was trying to avoid a piece of debris and went to just go around it and I completely lost my back tire and I fishtailed out. So 
seriously debated taking the scooter down here. But man, that's a journey. It looks like there's been a bit of a rock slide over there, so we wouldn't have been able to get it too far. And Jessica looks so tiny from right here. But she's riding the crest over there. You can't really see her, but she's way over there. Let me try to pinpoint her. Oh, this truly is something else. This is a giant freaking hole for sure. Now, hopefully this gives you some idea of the scope of this hole, how massive it is. There's Jessica right there. She's a little adventurous, especially with that scooter, going places that typically she wouldn't go. Look at her go, all the way around this thing. So what do you think, baby girl? You took it around the giant hole. I, I, I don't think you would have done that on foot, but on this thing, it gave you a little bit of, a little bit of courage there, didn't it? A little it? bit of a journey, yeah. I was trying to get a specific view down into the cavern and I couldn't get it, so I kept moving and I kept moving. And um, this does nicely off-road, but I think being on flatter surfaces is going to be your best use of it. Nothing broke, right? Nothing broke. I did fishtail a couple of times again because here the dirt is so soft and loose that, you know, it's just like riding a bike. You might have a little bit of issue with it. It was obviously easier once the road flattened out. Going uphill was not that bad, but I did have to get off a couple of times because I couldn't get through the soft dirt. But this is definitely something I would use when we go trekking. There you go. It helps me a lot. But... I'm gonna have to do all the carrying because this is 80 pounds. 80 pounds. This thing's heavy as heck. Yeah, maybe that might be my biggest complaint is we would take it to more places if I was able to carry it and load it into the car because five foot three me, I'm a, what, 130 pounds? Yeah. I can't lift 80 pounds. That thing is, uh, here, let me back up even further. That's, uh, you're, it's almost as big as you. Never stays a day. A battle's always a coming my way. 